<laughs> this is the main space of the building. I don't know if you can really see in here, but it's yeah, about 40 great. feet by 40 feet. Looks a lot better than it did probably last time you were around here. Um, we pressure washed the walls and got the floors cleaned up. Uh, we're going to try to paint the walls in the next week or so. We're trying to do some, um, a couple different things to the building before we start painting inside or while we're waiting to paint. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think, is the main space that we use as community center and a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a teacher, uh, and so what I'm doing is homeschool here with uh, five kids from, well, a couple of the kids are from the, from the Ninth Ward, um, from about a mile from here, uh, whose family now live outside of the Ninth Ward, and then I have three more students who live I guess in the 8th Ward, right next to the ninth Ward. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'd like to do is get up to about 15 kids, because I think that's about all I can handle, um, and do homeschool with them. Uh, you know, under the law, you have the right to, you know, public school or Catholic school or private school, independent school, or you can do homeschool if you want. You also have the mm -hmm. right to hire a teacher to homeschool your kids. Um, and so I'm providing my tutoring services for free. B&R Grocery, they called it Blair Grocery, or they call it George Grocery, I think George Blair was the father. The family built the store in the 1950s. This was, was the only grocery store in the, this was in the neighborhood? The, yeah, it was the only grocery store in the Lower Ninth, well, on north of Claiborne in the Lower Ninth Ward that I know of. Um, and I've been told that it's the first black-owned business in the Lower Ninth Ward. It's the least reconstructed area of the city. It seems to me like a fairly typical block down here in this neighborhood may have one to two houses that have been um, put back together and the families are living in them. See it? Well, you can look on this block. There's nobody living on this block, period, on either side of the street. There's two families in that one duplex, and then I think there's one family living on the other side of that block. There's nobody living on this block. There's one house on the block that this building is on that has somebody living in it. And with me, that's two. The Lower Ninth Ward, historically, was uh, the, I think, it was like 90-something percent homeowners and 90-something percent of those people were black. Uh, there was, you know, I don't know, more than 50% of the people lived in poverty, but it didn't have such an enormous impact on people's lives on an everyday basis because everybody, um, had family and cousins and relatives who lived around them and so you know you could get somebody to help babysit or watch your kids if you had to go do something or if you needed you know probably a little bit of money to tide over till payday or until mm -hmm. your check comes then you could get a little bit of money from somebody you had um, multiple generations of families on the block the Blair family um, was gracious enough to allow me to use this building for two years if I make renovations and improvements to the building. So, as you can see, we're in the process of renovating and improving the building. <laughs> um, and uh, this is Thanksgiving break, and so I'm trying to get in windows, fix a couple holes in the roof, uh, run electric, uh, make sure we got at least one solid bathroom up and running and going by the time we get back from Thanksgiving break so that we can start having class in here. Oh yeah, and heat, because it does actually get cold in New Orleans if you've never been here. Then what we want to do is renovate the rest of the building. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, some folks from the neighborhood who know how to do plumbing and electric. The parents' bedroom, you know, there's two bedrooms over here, and then you've got a kitchen over here. And so what I'd like to do is have the kids renovate the upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the things, as you can see in the neighborhood, is that there's a lot of houses that need to be renovated. Right. At one level, there's immediate jobs if you know how to do electric and plumbing. We've got some folks who, are, who know how to do that, and they want to come in and show the kids how to do it. I think in terms of community service, um, one of the ongoing community projects that we could be doing is building housing right around us. And not, not to sell, but just to go in and help people with their houses. Some people have their materials, but they don't have any money for labor, or they've been... Uh, subject to like a contractor fraud where they, you know, mm -hmm. they gave them $4,000, which is half the money or whatever, mm -hmm. and then the contractor just walked off with the $4,000. Mm -hmm. There are probably thousands of cases of that in New Orleans. It might even be tens of thousands. I don't know. But it's really, really bad. Um, and so there's some people who have all their stuff and they just don't have the, they don't have the money for labor. Um, and so uh, I think the kids could do it as a job if they want. I think mm -hmm. they could do it just for the community. It's going to take a lot of things to address education issues in Louisiana. Louisiana has some of the worst education in the country. It's like 
49 out of 50 on everything, or 50 out of 50, or 45 out of 50, uh, you know, on everything. Um, charter schools will work for some kids. Arts schools will work for some kids. You know, Job Corps will work for some kids. Just straight up GED programs will work for some kids. Um, I think a small alternative school uh, that does stuff like I'm thinking about for them um, could be great. Some ideas for the curriculum are, um, I know we're already doing public debate um, and doing debate out in the community um, and working with the school uptown to figure out how to do relevant debate. So the one we're working on right now is, um, uh, what's the question? Oh, are immigrants stealing our jobs? That was one of the kid. That was one of the questions that the kids generated. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is looking at all the kind of different aspects and parts of how we could go about answering that question and re arriving at an answer. And that was their question. And I think in a, in a, it's a good framing of the question. <laughs> you know, for 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 teaching, it's a great framing of the question. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're looking at that. I want to do a virtual history museum online of the Lower Ninth Ward. Um, that I think my first group of five students could do a, some basic work on. And then as the school grows and evolves, mm -hmm. the, the virtual museum will grow and evolve as well. And as you know, and they could say, well, when new cuts come in and say, well, here, go look at this thing we did online. Mm -hmm. Now you add your part that you want to add or add something else, another part of the story that needs to be told. And they could go back to look at Betsy or 1927, Great, Great Mississippi River Flood, mm -hmm. or they could, um, you know, there's a lot of things they could do. There's some arts curriculum that I'm putting together with Xavier University and Colton, which is Colton School. Well, now it's called Colton, but it was a school, and now it's turned into half artist space and half school. Um, hmm. And so we're developing some curriculum with them. We've had some people come out and look at it uh, who know a little bit about urban farming, and they think that uh, we could definitely grow food on here. And so one of the things that we're Right now, it's waiting for a soil test to come back. The front third of it's really, really bad. It looks like a garbage dump. The middle third is actually pretty good, and it's pretty clean, pretty litter-free. The back, I, um, uh, we were talking to Macon Fry, the garden guy, about that, and he said that that was probably a garden because the soil is so good back there. It's it, it's a little packed down because nobody's done anything with it in three years. Right. But he said the soil quality back there is really really good, and he said he'd probably just go ahead and plant it. <laughs> he said he said don't eat it till you get the soil test back. But he said you'd probably go ahead and plant back there. It's really good quality. Hmm. Um, we got our compost compost bin set up, and uh, got some railroad ties to put some flower beds in the front over here. How great would it be if we could do enough farming out here that we could actually turn this back into a store um, and a co-op? for the neighborhood, you know, with seafood and meat and, you know, lots of good organic mm -hmm. vegetables. Maybe people from the neighborhood would bring this stuff here. At least we could maybe even run a farmer's market on Saturday morning out here so people could stop by and then eventually turn it back into a store. If we could do something like that down here, then we could afford to have a store and we could, and the people and the, you know, the kids in the neighborhood could learn how to run a store and do like business management stuff uh, or whatever. All right. um, Co-op style, and you know, and then we uh, and then we could support the school, and then the kids would be able to eat, you know, fresh, somewhat decent food, and then we could be building houses in the neighborhood, and literally just kind of put the whole thing, or at least play a part in putting the whole thing back together. Right. So there'll be a lot of other players and people involved, um, you know, like you all who are watching this. <laughs> we need your help because <laughs> right so, now it's all it's all volunteer. Um, you know, or my efforts all volunteer. I really don't have any money to pay people, um, and so it would be nice if we had two more teachers eventually. Uh, right now, uh, I could really use a hot water heater. That would be great. <laughs> any basic electrical wiring would be great. <clears throat> any basic plumbing materials would be great. You know, PEX, uh, 200 amp interior panel boxes. Uh, I could really, really use computers. Would be amazing. Computers would be the best. Like. I've got five kids, and I'd like to be up to ten by Christmas. i got more kids than I know what to do with, but I can't really take them um, until, uh, you know, I've got the building up and stuff. Right. Um, but we could definitely take, uh, like, ten computers would be great. I kept feeling like the educational needs of the kids down here weren't really being met, and particularly the kids who are, you know, people would consider at-risk kids. 
um, just really aren't being met. They're being suspended and expelled at the at you know incredibly high rates. I think the Southern Poverty Law Center has just opened up a center here to do the school to the prison reform project. Um, and if you look up stuff on their website, they talk about uh, uh, Mississippi. And the numbers in, in Louisiana are com comparable to or worse than what you see in Mississippi. And Mississippi is bad. Uh, you know, the number of kids are being suspended and expelled. The kids in the judiciary system who are still teenagers and are still in the school system, it's ridiculous. And nobody's, you know, it just doesn't seem like anybody... Well, it doesn't seem like it would, be, it would hurt if I tried to put in my two cents to help deal with it. How about that? <laughs> and so that's where it started from. And so what's that thing? Like, if not now, when? If not me, who? Well, I asked myself that question and I figured out the answer. So here I am. Mobile broadcast news. I know of, um, and I've been told that it's the first black owned business in the Lower Ninth Ward. It's the least reconstructed area of the city. It seems to me like a fairly typical block down here in this neighborhood may have one to two houses that have been. Um, put back together and the families are living in them. See? Well, you can look on this block. There's nobody living on this block, period, on either outside of the ninth ward. And then I have three more students who live, I guess, in the eighth ward, right next to the ninth ward. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'd like to do is get up to about 15 kids, because I think that's about all I can handle, um, and do homeschool with them. Uh, you know, under the law, you have the right to, you know, public school or Catholic school or private school, independent school, or you can do homeschool if you want. You also have the mm -hmm. right to hire a teacher to homeschool your kids. <laughs> this is the main space of the building. I don't know if you can really see in here, but it's yeah, about 40 great. feet by 40 feet. Looks a lot better than it did probably last time you were around here. Um, we pressure washed the walls and got the floors cleaned up. Uh, we're going to try to paint the walls in the next week or so. We're trying to do some, um, a couple different things to the building before we start kids. Um, and so I'm providing my tutoring services for free. B&R Grocery, they called it Blair Grocery, or they call it George Grocery, I think George Blair was the father. The family built the store in the 1950s. This was the only grocery store in the, this was in the neighborhood? The, yeah, it was the only grocery store in the Lower Ninth, well, on north of Claiborne in the Lower Ninth Ward that I painting inside or while we're waiting to paint. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think, is the main space to be used as community center and a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a teacher. Uh, and so what I'm doing is homeschool here with uh, five kids from, well, a couple of the kids are from the, from the Ninth Ward, um, from about a mile from here, uh, whose family now live